But here's the key that Jesus showed in this particular verse. Jesus showed us something significant because the disciples had been with Jesus for some time now. They had seen the things that he does. Jesus had said, you know, to the people he healed, your faith has made you well. So the assumption overall would be if I had more faith, then I will get all the things I need. Then I will have great access to this healing. See, because the world we live in today is filled with bad stuff, bad reports. And if we were to be guided by those things, we would not make it and even see. Because the world we live in today is filled with bad news, is filled with bad stuff. And trust in what it says. And trust in what it says. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the other apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, other elders and brethren. Shalom, even to you, few sisters, all you supporters of the truth, you few sisters, sincere ones, and shalom to the elect. So, this is why I say the uh, H word of Christianity. Why I have, uh, you know, Amos 5 and 15, let me read, just quote that real quick. Hate the evil and love the good. Now, it's kind of disturbing because everybody in the comment board to that video, the first one, said that amen is beautiful in our eyes. This is what they said. Nobody really says his color doesn't matter until we make the argument about what the Messiah looked like. And the sick part about it, even though other nations, other people are trying to say now they're claiming it doesn't matter what he looks like, why is this guy trying to bring him back, bring white Jesus back? Because of some architect, artist or whatever, probably from Greek or whatever, Greek or Rome, I don't know. But that's not what the Bible say he looked like. But he automatically put the Cesare face, right? Anybody don't know. Caesar Borgia was the painting in the 1450s. Caesar Borgias is the painting, I believe, by the Pope Alexander the fifth or sixth or something like that. And put him up to be the new Messiah because the Pope was saying he was the father, but this is my son. In case you don't know that. So... In order to know this, they whitewashed it, right? And uh, covered the images up, as Maccabees 3.48 says. Job 9.24 says, The earth is given in the hand of the wicked. He, they cover up the faces of the judges thereof. My problem I'm having again is none of this mattered when we saw the white Jesus. I'm old enough to remember um, in the 70s, right? When I was going to church as a young boy, right? A young lad. I remember seeing the white Jesuses everywhere. In fact, they even made me paint them in, in Sunday Bible school, vacation Bible school for the summer for all the little black, so-called black children. They made us paint that. They made us uh, pour the molds, you know, make the molds and then they come out. And all we could do is be excited that we created Jesus out in our mind, right? That was the destruction that was being put forth in our mind. That's how you destroy someone. Art imitates life. And this is what they've done. They destroyed us. And this black Christian, I think African, that's that's the worst Christianity on the planet in Africa. <clears throat> Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe to them that call good evil. Right? Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness before light and light for darkness. That they that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now to get into the lesson, what I wanted to touch on, there was a comment that I got on a white Christian, right? Um, now it's not about white and black right now. Some of our people do look white. I keep saying that. But for truth's sake, right, we expose the fact that the Messiah, that wasn't his name. <clears throat> number one, it's not what he looked like. And number two, that wasn't his name. 
right, or vice versa. And now everybody's saying, when I was in church, it was no big deal. This is what he looked like. Nobody ever came up to me and said, you know, son, that doesn't matter what he looked like. In fact, they forced the image on us. If they felt that Jesus was all colors, why didn't they let us have a black Jesus? Why did they have a picture of him at all? But it is only good when they put the picture up. And this guy leaves a comment saying, gee, it doesn't matter his color. Well, I can see the concept to a degree. No, once we wake up to know who, we, who he is, but it is going to matter because when he come back, he will not meet thee as a man, but when, you, when he comes back and everybody will know, you're not going to see some white man with long, blonde, stringy hair. Right? That's the problem I'm having. It was never an issue when we saw white Jesus up in the churches and all around on TV. Everything was white Jesus. Now, we're saying, no, he didn't look like that. So in other words, we can't have a black Jesus, but you can have a white Jesus. And you could put it on us and make us believe that. You know, it's dangerous. It's kind of like someone, uh, one of your loved ones die, and they're a so-called black man, right? And they die. Well, let me say this. Let's say you're a so-called white person, so-called. And your grandfather dies in old age. He's sickly. He died. He's 80 years old. They have a, a closed casket funeral for whatever reason. But on the top, it's a black man with a bush with gray hair. Would you people in the funeral be happy about that or would you say that's a consecration? Or you say that something is wrong with that, that image or that situation? You know damn well you would. And we're doing the same thing. Something is wrong with that image. So it damn sure does matter. Because during the 1500s, right, you forced that on our people. And you push that image because our slave masters look like him. So we believe he's God. That's why through generation to generation, our people here and in Africa mainly worship white Jesus, man. And the Native Americans, the Hispanics, the Latinos, they all follow white Jesus, man. In other words, stay sick. This is what they're saying. Follow white Jesus. Be under our foot because it's not important to them that we see a white Jesus that we don't identify with. And we know that the most high, right, is going to be the image, the, the, the Messiah is going to be the image of the father. But let's go. Let's get another scripture. Second Corinthians. For the weapons of our warfare, 10 or 4, weapons of warfare, not carnal, but mighty through the, uh, to God. To the pulling down of the strongholds, you know, these crazy images that has been put up and that we follow. Okay. Um, let's get another scripture real quick that I want to get. I just wanted to do a short commentary on this because, you know, the sickness of our people came through false imagery. Okay, so now when you say Jesus is white, you start believing everybody who is not of you are great people. Now, the ultimate one that we worship, they're saying is him. So you can see why we are destroyed, as Hosea 4 and 6 say, we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? You can see why we don't have any inner superiority in us to believe we can do or be anything better. The problem is when we start bringing that up now you're the H group right as long as everybody is allowed to do what they want right it's all right you, you don't have no not, not, nothing against that right let's go to um let's go to Daniel's 10 Daniel 7 um let's do Daniel 7 and 9 Okay, it said, I beheld the thrones of cast down in the ancient of days, the most high, did sit, whose garment was white as snow. Again, we're going to get into that too. White as snow, and his hair of his head 
like, and you go to the old English, it says like under pure wool. The old English says the hair of the Negroes, by the way. It says like of the pure wool. His throne was like the fury flame and his wheels of burning fire. So what the Christians are doing now, they're saying, well, wait a minute. <clears throat> These are all allegories. These are all metaphorical because it says his, his feet is like the flame, like the wheels. So you're turning it on and off. No, all of this is kind of like metaphorical but it's explaining what it looks like. What I mean by that, it says white as snow, right? It doesn't mean his hair was snow. His hair of his head like pure wool. It doesn't mean he his hair was actually wool, but it's likened unto pure wool. We're going to get this in Revelation 1. Revelation 1 and 14, right? Uh, his head and his hairs were white like the old definitions, uh, old translation says likened, uh, uh, likened wool. That's what it says. It says likened wool. And then it, you put these words that connect it that says as white as snow. The original didn't say as white as snow. It just said as white snow, right? It just says white snow. And his eyes were a flame of fire. No, his eyes wasn't fire, but it was a flame of fire. And his feet likened, the original text says, likened unto fine brass. In fact, the old definition of the 1300s, way before predating the KJV, right? The Tinsdale Bible or something like that, the Wycliffe Bible. It said his, his feet was likened unto a uh, lantern burned in a chimney. That's what it says, Right? So we're talking back before the thir uh, before um, the, the Renaissance or right as white supremacy was taking hold. So you go back before then, you will get the truth. You will get the real images. You'll get to the black art, the real images, the Russian icons, which everybody around the world know except here, right? Let's look it up. It, say, it says... Like unto fine brass. Now, when you look at fine brass, they managed to make brass look like gold. And originally, brass did not look like gold or it would have been called gold. That was just another cheap material to make it. Like if you get a fake chain, a brass chain, it almost looks like gold. But fine brass is you have the impurities taken out and it blackens. Anything dealing with impurity, this is what we talk. That's why they said like a furnace. As if they burned, in the old uh, old text, it says a chimney, as a burnt chimney, burnt, past tense, burnt chimney. Now, some of the Christians will say, well, yeah, well, that's the glowing. It was glowing. Well, naturally. Can you imagine these scholars who wrote this and they said, well, wait a minute. There's no way. We can't say he was black. We're in power. <laughs> And, then, and this is what you see now. It doesn't matter what this balded face man says with his hat on. Doesn't matter. We see it. We see Deuteronomy 28. We see everything that's happened to us in our history, our present, and the future. We can see it all now. And there's nothing you can do. You can make videos. You can come out and say, oh, these people are this or that. Doesn't matter. We got you. The Lord has woken us up, man. You know, a lot of us has been awakened. Now, the elect was only going to get it or the elect is only going to be delivered on this side. But guess what? That's a dangerous thing for us to be educated. As long as you thought we believed in white Jesus, we loved white Jesus, we honored white Jesus and white, uh, white everybody else, every great leader, every great person was white. And then a lot of those people, uh, what's his name? Um, George Washington Carver, I believe, the Peanut Man, I believe, who was a, by the way, a um, well, I'm not going to say he was the LGB alphabet uh, organization, but he was a terror. He had a white father. He was uh, of a slave, and they would have them, and they would set them up to be rulers and leaders. There was the third. He was a he was a thirty third degree, right? And they would set them up to be leaders over other black people to give them a vision of a black face. This is all they did with Barack Obama. Barack Obama is not so-called so Negro. 
right? I got in an argument with one of them in the gas station and he called me the, the N-word. So that was fine, even though he was darker than me. So they know. And now we know. And then you see this guy in this clip He's got all kind of white images of Jesus. He just loves white Jesus. He probably got a white Jesus doll he laid beside, laid beside him in the bed. And regular white supremacists don't even do that. This is crazy how destroyed we are as a people. He may even be a heathen. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.